Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'll be teaching you about the physics of bouncing projectiles and how to implement them into your Roblox games. This is a follow-up video to my previous video about projectiles, so make sure to check that video out before watching this video, otherwise you won't be able to understand this one. Funnily enough, this video idea came to me at Topgolf. I was thinking about my dead YouTube channel and what I should upload, and I saw the golf simulation that plays whenever you hit a ball, and made me curious about how projectiles bounce. I thought that would be perfect for a YouTube video, so I did some research, and here we are. Today, we'll be going over the dot product, how to calculate a plane, how to reflect a point over a plane, how that reflection applies to bouncing projectiles, and how to implement that into our previously made projectile tool. First, let's get into the dot product. The dot product is a method of multiplying two vectors to get a scalar value. This equation is very simple. Say we have vectors A and B, both with their respective components. All we do is add the products of each corresponding component of vectors A and B. For example, the x component of A times the x component of B plus the y component of A times the y component of B plus the z component of A times the z component of B is equal to the dot product. This is useful for calculating the angles between two vectors. We won't be using angles today, but for the sake of completeness, here's the equation. The dot product of A and B is equal to the absolute value of the magnitude of A times the absolute value of the magnitude of B times cosine theta, which is your angle. We can rearrange this equation to the arc cosine of the dot product of A and B divided by the absolute value of the magnitude of A times the absolute value of the magnitude of B is equal to our angle. A plane is a flat surface where the entire line created by two points lies. We won't need to calculate planes today because 3D models already provide us with enough information, but it is important that you understand what you're doing. We need three points to calculate a plane. These three points can be used to create vectors A and B. With these three points, we can calculate the normal vector of the plane. The normal vector is a vector that denotes the direction that a plane is facing. We can calculate the normal vector using the cross product, which is a vector that is orthogonal, or perpendicular, to both vectors A and B. In game development, 3D models already have a normal vector written into the object data, so we won't need to use the cross product today. Let's let our normal vector be n with the components A, B, and C, and let's let an arbitrary point on our plane that we already have be P with the components XP, YP, and ZP. The equation for our plane will be A times X minus XP plus B times Y minus YP plus C times Z minus ZP equals zero. X, Y, and Z are our input values. Because of the context that we're using this normal vector in, the arbitrary point on our plane will always be equal to the origin. This makes our equation AX plus BY plus CZ is equal to zero. The idea behind reflecting a point over a plane is finding a line parallel to the normal vector that passes through our point and the plane, and then moving our point across the line until it is equidistant from the plane as it was originally. We do this by multiplying our normal vector by a constant and then adding it to our point. Let's let the point P be the point we want to reflect, and let's let N be the normal vector and T be the constant value. Our first equation is P prime is equal to P plus the normal vector times our constant T. This adds the normal vector times the constant to our point so that our point lies on the plane. This is what we'll use to find our constant. Once we multiply everything out, we'll get these equations. X is equal to XP plus T times A. Y is equal to YP plus T times B. And Z is equal to ZP plus T times C. We can now plug these points into our equation and derive T. Once we plug in these equations, we get this. And once we distribute everything out, we'll get this. Now let's isolate our values with t to get this. We can factor out t from our equation to get this. From our derivation of t, we get that t is equal to this. Now adding our normal times the constant t only gets our point to be on the plane. And we want our point to be reflected across the plane. So all we need to do is multiply t by 2. This makes our equation p prime is equal to p plus 2 times the normal vector times our constant t. Now do you remember when we learned about the dot product? How does that fit into this? Well, let's calculate the dot product of the vector made by P and our normal vector. The dot product is equal to XP times A plus YP times B plus ZP times C. Now, does that look familiar to you? That fits directly into our equation for T. So our equation for T is the dot product of the vector made by our point P 
and our normal vector divided by a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Now, does the denominator look familiar to you? That's actually the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, which states that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared. The normal vector given by every game engine and 3D modeling software always has a magnitude of 1, and 1 squared is just 1, so a squared plus b squared plus c squared is just equal to 1. This makes our equation for t, the dot product of our normal vector and the vector made by our point p over 1, or just the dot product of the normal vector and the vector made by the point p. Our new equation for the plane reflection is p prime is equal to p plus 2 times the dot product of p and n times n. Now, how does reflecting over a plane relate to bouncing projectiles? Well, first, let's draw a bouncing ball on a horizontal plane. When the ball touches the ground, the vertical component of its velocity is reversed going from down to up. Intuitively, you may think that all we need to do is multiply the vertical component by negative 1, but this is only true for bouncing on a horizontal plane. Let's draw a different scenario, this time on an incline. Let's say our ball is flying into the incline, and this is the velocity. How do we get it to bounce? We can't just multiply the vertical component by negative 1 anymore. Let's say our incline is a plane denoted by this normal vector. What we need to do to make it bounce off the plane is reflect the velocity of the ball over the plane made by our incline. We reflect this velocity using our previous equation. Now projectiles don't bounce forever. Video games use an approximation where we decay the magnitude of the velocity by a number to make the bounces smaller and smaller. Let's say our decay constant is d. Our new reflection equation becomes p prime is equal to d times p plus 2 times the dot product of p and n times n. We'll set d to a number like 0.75, which makes the velocity of our projectile 25% smaller every single time it hits a surface. That's it for the theoretical part of this video. Now let's get to the actual implementation. All right, guys, this is the implementation section of the video. Um, right now, we're in the projectile place from the last video. So as you can see, if I click, it just shoots a projectile, which does not bounce. Um, it just, it's just a regular projectile. Um, so we're going to make it bounce. So um, if we go to our projectile module, we are going to need some new input values here. For our projectile object, I'm going to add a max bounces, a decay threshold. Uh, max bounces is how many times we're going to let it bounce before it just ends. Uh, the decay is, as we discussed before, how much we're going to decay the magnitude of the velocity every single time it bounces. And the threshold is how small we're going to allow the velocity to get before ending the projectile. because if the velocity gets too small from our decay, then the ray that it shoots is going to be too small to actually detect anything. And so it's just going to fall straight through the floor and it's not going to be able to, it's not going to work. So we're just going to add a threshold here uh, to be safe. So we're just going to add these as properties of our new projectile object. And then we're going to add these as input values to our projectile object here. So our max bounces will be four, our decay will be one, and our threshold will be uh, three. Okay. So onto this part, we're going to delete this. We need to add some new variables. We're going to need a total time is equal to zero. Uh, local bounces equal to zero. We're going to need a current, current velocity is equal to our velocity. Um, oh, and I would like to add that I'm changing V force to velocity. I realize this terminology is wrong. It's not actually a force. It's a velocity. It's like a, it's a vector. I don't know why I called it force, but okay. So this is what we have right now. Um, we need to have our total time equal to zero. And then we're going to have, if you remember from our last video uh, with kinematics, our velocity at any given point is the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. So our current velocity is going to be equal to velocity uh, plus a times t. We get on here. This uh, we're going to change this because if we actually get a ray result, that means it's hit a surface and we want it to bounce. I'm just going to add if total time. Uh, is greater than self dot despawn time. Then we're going to just find through 
It's going to end our loop. So we don't actually want this to be found. We're going to add a bounce. Uh, and we're going to set our t is equal to zero. So basically what's happening is every time it hits a surface and we want it to bounce, we are calculating our projectile as pretty much a new projectile. Our velocity is going to be equal to our current velocity plus two times the current velocity dot uh, ray result dot normal times the ray result dot normal. And I realize this has to be uh, negative because it's t is equal to the negative dot from it. So our start position, since we're relaunching the projectile, our start position needs to be the ray result position. I'm going to set our current position to the ray result dot position. Uh, and yeah, okay. And I'm gonna wrap this all in if bounces is less than max bounces. Then, and, and this is self dot max bounces. Um, and then else bound is equal to true. Um, this should uh, bounce our projectile. As you can see, it is bouncing. And uh, one, two, three, four, that's our max bounces. And as you can see, it bounces off all these surfaces. So it's really just as simple as that. Um, I'm going to add a decay. It is pretty easy to add that. All you have to do, self.decay, this, and then just multiply the velocity by the decay. Uh, I realize our decay is 1, so it's not going to change anything. If I change our decay to uh, 0 0.8, you will see a difference. Let's reduce the um, the velocity really quick. Just change it to like 5, and it should be more apparent. Yeah, as you can see, bounces are getting smaller. Now, here is an issue that we might have. So let's change our decay to something small, like 0 0.4, and then we have... Our max bounces, let's set them to like, I don't know, like a thousand. And then let's see what happens because we haven't implemented the threshold yet. So as you can see, it falls through the base plate. If we change our base plate transparency to 0 0.7, just so we can see through it, let's throw another projectile. It falls straight through. And typically this is the kind of decay that you want on your projectile, like something small. Um, so it's just falling straight through the base plate. And that's because we have to set our threshold, um, which is the minimum magnitude of velocity that we're going to allow our projectile to reach before just deleting it. So uh, we're going to say if our velocity dot magnitude is less than self dot threshold, then um, we're just going to end it. We're just going to cut it off and that'll be our projectile basically so it just ends right there once the velocity reaches a certain point even though our max bounces is like a thousand we're just going to cut it off right there that'll be pretty much it for the implementation i think i've pretty much covered everything if you have any questions make sure to comment below you can join the discord server it's pretty dead but if you ask a question i will answer Probably, unless it's dumb. Uh, so, yeah, like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. As I'm making this video, I, I find out about this new feature that they're adding called Unreliable Remote Events, which goes hand in hand with like a projectile because um, in networking, there's two types of connections like there's TCP, UDP. Uh, basically, TCP is what remote events are, um, where we're pretty much where it's like it sends reliable reliably sends information but it's kind of slow um with udp it's basically what servers use to replicate stuff that needs to be updated every tick uh blah 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 i get into it but uh this is good for like client replication of projectiles um which perfectly i just made in this video so watch out for part three of this series where we'll be using unreliable remote events to um 
make client replication of projectiles. So um, uh, watch out for that, yeah?